right, good morning everyone. I'm Nir, aka Pezzo, one of the Point of Care Fellow. And uh, today we're going to speak about uh, Point of Care for Lumbar Puncture. Uh, I don't have any disclosure, but I have two confessions to make. First, I one of the things I hate the most is to present some lecture, especially in English. So if I will have some slides in Hebrew, I already ask your forgiveness from advance. And secondly, which is very much connected to the lecture, when I saw on the academic column that I was supposed to present, like, pointed care LP, I think I probably cured someone because I told myself, what's that? Like, I love to present something that I believe in, and I, I'm a true believer of pointed care. Like, uh, I think it's already changed my life and the way I'm going to practice medicine in so many different applications. But regarding like LP, well, like, you know, each and every one of us probably did like a few hundred LP in his life. So like, why do I need like point of care ultrasound? And probably going to speak about it in the end of the lecture. It's not like a teaser or something, but I think during my work on this presentation, I'm not sure I'm like completely converted, but I'm more a believer. All right. That yeah, maybe we should, or maybe we need to think strongly to do that. So stay tuned and see if I will able to convince you a little bit, or you can do the same transition that I did. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to speak about point of care assisted LP today, and we're going to speak about positioning, landmarks, technique, and some evidence-based medicine. And uh, Mark and the pro will appear a few more times in my lecture, so just like the promo, all right? Uh, so uh, I think when we're going to think about the clinical scenario that we need to do NLP in our eMERGE, we think we can imagine two extremities. So the first will be this cute, lovely young baby that uh, most of the time we need to rule out meningitis. And as you can see, landmark looks pretty clear. I, can even think I can see his spine bulging from here. Uh, but maybe our problem with him that he will have like a small interspinous spaces that we're going to speak about it in a minute. Uh, the one thing that we're going to love to do point of care for him because his spine will be most of the time cardiogenic and will be visualized to, to our uh, transducer. Uh, so we can visualize the spinal canal because the suffocation occurs around the age of one year. So this is like one scenario. The other maybe common scenario are this lovely young lady. And so if we speak about the other world, so like obese or overweight, if we speak about the PIDS world, so like the mature teenager that uh, also has probably some kind of like weight problems with some visual disturbance and we want to rule out, let's say, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And for this lovely lady, probably we'll have some troubles to figure out where the hell is our landmark. And we also gonna have some problem with ossification because it's already completed, which, which our probe probably will like less when we try to visualize things. So let's start with the, our first scenario. All right, so let's take this lovely young gentleman, probably a month or two months old, that comes with a fever, and those of us who has good eyes can see that his frontal is hmm, bulging. So we decide that we need to do an LP. And we decided that today we're going to use the ultrasound machine to help us do that. So again, we can do it in the two positions that we know lateral decubitus and the sitting position. Our textbooks speak about sitting position, but like articles that I read and website that I visited during my presentation of the lecture spoke about like doing in the lateral decubitus as well. Uh, so we can do it like on the position that we know or prefer. Uh, we're gonna need to choose our transducer. So again, because in this scenario we speak about a baby, uh, so we're gonna choose our high frequency probe, the golf stick or the inner probe because we will prefer to see details more clearly. Regarding our materials, so we only need like the regular LP 
stuff. Uh, if we will decide that we're going to take the dynamic approach, that I'm going to speak about it like in a minute, meaning that we will puncture the kid while we are visualizing um, with our ultrasound machine and not using ultrasound machine just to do the landmarks. So then we'll need like a tegaderm or some sterile sleeve to put on our probe. But most of the time, we don't even need to do that. So just uh, some reminders about anatomy. Uh, I think most of us probably still remembers. So we speak about putting our needles between L3 to L4. Some would say between L4 to L5, but the most important thing is supposed to be caudal to the conus medullaris over there. Then on our way with the needles, we need to cross like a few ligaments on the way, uh, the ligament of flavum, and then we're going to reach the dura. We're going to go through the epidural space to the dura, and then underneath the dura, we're going to find our treasure, which is called the subarachnoid space, or sometimes the intratecal space. And from there, we're going to arrange our CSF. Um, so here are they on the screen. So how does it look on ultrasound? So let's play a game, right? I gave you like a, a code map on top. So if you will feel that you're struggling, so that's like a long view, right, of the spine. Uh, so anyone wants to guess what that is? I heard spinous process, so that's correct. So this is like spinous process. Anyone to guess what this is here? That's this, see? So that's the vertebral body. Uh, this small space here, what do you think it is? That's this space over here, right? So that's like the epidural space, right? And this bright line here, what do you think this is it? It's this line here, so that's the dura. And here is our treasure, right? The subarachnoid space or like the intratecal space. So we can see here the conus modularis as well. This is the level of T12 and L1, right? So we still see the conus modularis, right? Uh, so when we're gonna do like our actual LP, we're probably gonna put our needle more caudally here. And this is another view of a neonate uh, spine, like from around L5, sorry, from L1 to S5, right? So again, the conus modularis and the cauda equina, the film terminale, Hold out to it. And uh, how does it look on the transverse plane? So I will show you two views. The first one, if we're going to put a probe just on top of the spinous process, right? So here we can see the spinous process and the acoustic shadow that it creates underneath. And here are the paraspinal muscles on both sides. Uh, if you're going to slide our probe just like the phallic or caudalic to it, and we're going to be on the intraspinous plane, right? So things will look, sorry, a little bit differently, right? So uh, uh, again, this is the epidural space, <coughs> this is the dura, and this is the intrastecal space, right? And what's up here? It's run away. But that's again, uh, yeah. that's cute. Uh, so that's again a long plane and a transverse plane, right? Of the thing that we just saw, sorry about it. That's the line that marks the depth that we can also appreciate and measure how much needle we need to go through into our uh, uh, subarachnoid space.